So Dave, during the pandemic time, we know that a lot of people started working from home and remote working, remote teams. And now that kind of a COVID is ending, let's hope so, people are coming back. But employees, are, they don't want, they want the option of working maybe one day from home or two days from home and three days from office. So in your opinion, with this hybrid model of working, how can employee employers or companies create a culture that can navigate those two people at work or people at home and working together? You know, Meher, I honestly don't know. And I often have opinions. I think one of the things we're finding is that people Hybrid work is not new, and everybody gets excited. Hybrid work is the future. Yeah. Well, hybrid work's been around for a long time. I know in Vancouver, you've often worked at home. You now have an office in Newfoundland. I work at home. Yeah. The issue is not where we work. The issue is what we do when we work. Yes. For example, did my work today create value for a customer? Mm -hmm. That's the conceptual question. Yes. I don't care where you do it. You could do it in a coffee shop, a bookstore, on an airplane, in a hotel, at home, or in an office. The issue, I sh and that one I get, I get that. The issue is not where we work. It's not hybrid or not hybrid. It's what we work on. The question you raised is the one that's troublesome. On the one hand, working at home clearly increases productivity and personal well-being. Yeah. I won't ask how you're dressed today. Uh, <laughs> and you won't ask how I'm dressed today. Because I, I have a, a nice shirt on and I could have a coat on, but I may be in gym shorts, hypothetically. Yes. Um, and I'm, I'm 20 feet from my bedroom. So, and, and, and I like that. That's the personal side. But the organizational side is it really is tough to create a cohesive unit or a culture. Yeah. And I'm not sure how to do that all the way. I think there is some reality that employees are going to have to face, that you do have to get together. You do have to see each other. You do have to be face-to-face -face and spend time building that cohesive relationship. I remember when our son got married a number of years ago, he, uh, he spent almost all of his time texting his fiance. And he said, dad, do you have any hints? And I said, uh, yeah, you ought to spend some time physically together uh, because, you know, and, 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 and this is not about intimacy. It's not about sex. It's about relationships because yeah. you need to know that. And, and I think that's true. And I don't know, can you create that same level of relationship through technology? I feel like you're my friend. I enjoy you. I love connecting with you in these interviews. I love connecting with you through. But I'd like through, to see you one day in person. But we want to see each other. We want to yeah. go have coffee. We want to, we want to high five in person. I, I, and, and I don't, I think that we need both of those yeah. and we need to get people together. And so I don't have a great answer. I think leaders can check in, but we've got to come together as well. But during COVID time, a lot of companies hired hybrid people. So people in New York now working for companies in Mexico or people in Chicago are working for companies in Florida. So if they are kind of pressuring or they want to meet, so what's going to happen then? Again, I'm not sure. I think those companies, I think there's a, by the way, I'm going to get in trouble for this. I've chosen not to post this on LinkedIn, but I'll do it on your interview. I think there's sometimes among some employees, well, first of all, hybrid work doesn't work for everyone. Let's be realistic. Yes. If, I'm a, if I'm a doctor, if I'm a clerk in a store, if I'm in a manufacturing plant, I do have to go to work. So yes. I appreciate that. Yes. But if there is hybrid work, because I'm a knowledge worker like you and like me, there are some subset of those employees who are experiencing what I'm calling lately a bit of entitlement. Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I want. I can work where I want, when I want, how I want. You can't tell me. Mm -hmm. uh, part of me is about to say, you know, before COVID, I don't know about you, Mahir. I had days when I didn't love every minute of my job, <laughs> but I went to work. Yes. I still went to work. And I think there's one message that, for example, a company may say, yes, you're working in Miami, but we're headquartered in Toronto and we need to see you in person four days a week. But I don't want to fly to Toronto. Yeah. And the point is, I don't care what you want. I mean, I do care what you want, but you are that entitlement can get in the way of performance mm -hmm. that, that we we are going to say to employees. We're going to create flexibility, but we still have some accountability. Yeah. I don't know how to say that without people saying, oh, you're an ogre. 
you're going to make me do things I don't like. Well, sometimes work is a four letter word. And, uh, and, and that's a hard paradox to help people understand. Yeah. And then it will be difficult to have those conversations between the employees and the employees, and they have to come kind of a solution, but we're going to see how the work in the future is well, going. To and, and, and what may happen is somebody may say, I'm going to take this job in Florida. I don't like you in Toronto. So I'm going to quit the great resignation. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what they're going to find? The next company is going to say the same thing. Yeah. I mean, and so that's where that entitlement mentality becomes, uh, I think, over time, a little difficult. Again, I don't have perfect answer for your great. Those questions. are great insights there. I really appreciate that. And for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other tips, leave them below and tune in next time for another great question with Dave.